Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter two talking about performance measurement fundamentals and continuing ahead with the topic 2.1 which is definitely to talk about the typical matrices collected in the performance testing. And as a part of this tutorial, we are moving to the third segment of this topic, that is 2.1.3, selecting performance matrices. As a part of this small topic, we are just talking about how exactly selecting the matrices can take place and what kind of consideration you need to have with you in order to select from different parameters which we discussed in the previous tutorial. And just we know, make sure that certain configuration, certain parameters, certain environment can play a vital role. Now here we will see that how exactly a team can decide on collection of matrices which will be helpful for them at certain point of time while executing a performance test. So it should be noted that collecting more matrices than required is not necessarily a good thing. Just because you have got 100 matrices with you does not mean that collecting all of them will be really helpful. Sometimes it can further make your analysis more complex and not basically going to help you. So you might be wondering that, why did I collect this information at all if that information relates to anything and can help you really to come to a particular conclusion or not. So each matrix chosen requires a means for consistent collection and reporting. Now, of course, that has to be done throughout the entire performance testing lifecycle. And if in case you have a lot of matrices, and of course that includes some of the unwanted matrices, uh, that becomes quite tedious uh, to manage them every time you run a scenario. So it is very really important to define an obtainable set of metrics that support the performance test objective. So being sure about what would be the one which is required for you to analyze the outcomes and selecting only them will be the core task of the performance tester and the team. So for example, the goal cushion matrix, which is GQM approach, is a helpful way to align matrix with performance goals. So of course, we do know about what exactly a goal-oriented scenario is. Similarly, we have got goal cushion matrix where you first try to analyze different goals and try to understand that how these goals will be achieved and what are the helpful matrices which will be related to the goals and collect only them. So the idea is to first establish the goal of the performance test then ask questions to know when the goals have been achieved and matrices are associated with each question to ensure the answer to the question is measurable. And that's how one of the technique can actually help you to have the confined number of matrices which you may need at any point of time to analyze the outcomes. It should also be noted that the GQM approach does not always fit the performance testing process. For example, some metrics represent a system's health and are not directly linked to the goals. But goals are something which you are going to achieve. But of course, there are matrices which might not be really helpful at some point of time, but can give you the necessary information what you are going to be using as supporting the goal analysis, right? So there are matrices which you just pick it up and then uh, they will assist you from the point of, for example, the effort done on the test scenario preparation and what kind of configurations you have done, the time consumed for creating that configuration. So all these things will basically help you that how complex the scenario was, what kind of considerations you have taken into account. And then of course the goal uh, metric can add value to it. Okay, this is what we have achieved after doing all this, this sort of preparation and you know, creation of the scenario. Now also it is important to realize that the after the definition and capture of initial measurements, further measurements and matrices may be needed to understand true performance levels and to determine where corrective actions may be needed. So it's not really mandatory team, the matrices which you select will give you the end outcome that will be just like you collect the value and you declare it that this is what the outcome was. Sometimes the matrices will give you certain set of data and that data need to be further applied to another set of instruction or calculation to finally come out with the outcome or say that this was exactly the overall analysis of the performance execution. So you need to identify them and 
create the, a tag to put them under a certain category or probably under a certain level that uh, these are the things which we will be using to derive certain set of data and that data will be further fed into another calculation or system which will return you the exact analysis of it. So some of the matrices provide you input to analyze the information. So make sure that you identify them and declare them accordingly so that when you come to analysis part, you do not have any questions or any, any concerns to come out to the right output. Well, that was a short video talking about how to select performance matrices and what consideration you need to have with you. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.